Hi guys, welcome to my channel. I'm Zhong. Today I'm going to share with you how to create a sci fi scene and audio visualizer in Blender 3D 2.93. Before we dive into Blender, let me break down what we are going to do in this tutorial. So, first, we are going to create the audio visualizer and animate it using Geometry Node. And then we are going to create the canyon. I'm going to show you how to make it with the procedural way. After finish the canyon, we are going to make the river. I'm not going to make any simulation for it. We are going to use a material to fake it. And by the way, in this tutorial, I'm using Screen Space Global Illumination for Blender EV. So if you want to follow me for the rendering part, please go and download it. Okay, now before I get into the tutorial, I quickly want to say, today's video is sponsored by Wingfox, real-time motion graphic with Blender. This training is over 11 hours, it's cover procedural modeling, quick animation technique, shading tricks, EV optimization, and more. So if you want to take your Blender motion graphic skill to the next level, please hit the link in the description below. Alright, let's start the tutorial. First, select all and delete everything. And then press Shift A and add a circle. Then change the vertices to 6. We want to make a hexagon. Press R, then Y to constrain it in Y axis. And then tap 90 to rotate it 90 degree. Press R again and then press X and tap 90 to rotate it 90 degree on X axis. Then press tap to go into edit mode. Press A to select all vertices. Right click and subdivide it. Then change the numbers of cuts to 8. Then press E to extrude it and press S to scale it bigger. Then press E and X to extrude it again. We need to give it some thickness. Then press Tab again to exit the edit mode. Then press Shift D to duplicate another hexagon and press S to scale it bigger. Then go to Modifier Properties. Then add a Displace modifier. Change the strength to 0.6. We can still experiment with this value later after we set up everything. Press New to create a new texture. Then name it Audio Animation. You can put whatever name you like. And then press this button to jump to Texture tab. Change the Texture tab to Cloud. Then hover the size and press I to add a keyframe. By the way, before you add a keyframe, please make sure your thumb indicator is stay at 1. Okay, then go to Graph Editor. Press key and select Big Sound to F Curve. So from here, you can select the music you like. It can be a mp3 or wav file. Or you can download the music we use in this tutorial in the description below. So double click this. And now we can try to press spacebar to play the animation. And we can see now the displaced texture size is animating. Follow the keyframe that we baked just now. And now we want to include the music into the blender. So that when we play in the animation, we can listen to the sound at the same time. So go to video sequencer. Press add and add a sound. And then go back to the graph editor again. Then press spacebar again to play the animation. And next, I want to add the dot onto the vertices of the mesh. So to do it, go to Geometry Node Editor. Press New to apply Geometry Node to the object. In the 3D viewport, press Shift A and add a UV sphere. Change the radius to 0 0.03. Then select the object and go back to Geometry Node Editor. And then press Shift A and add a point instance. Then use the eyedropper to select the sphere. And currently, all the dot here is too consistent and we need to randomize it. So press Shift A, go to Attribute and add an Attribute Randomize. In the Attribute column, tap Skill. And then next, I want to make the dot size to animate follow the music as well. So in order to do this, we need to add a point skill. Then change the tab to float and then press Shift A. Go to Input and add a value. Connect it to the factor. And then we are going to bake the sound to the F curve again in this value node. So let's split the screen again and go to Graph Editor. Make sure your thumb indicator is stay at 1. And in the geometry node, hover the value and press I to add a keyframe. Go to key and select back sound to F curve. Then select our music. Then press spacebar to play the music again. Everything is good, but currently the dot is too small for me. So I'm going to add a math node to enlarge it. Add it before the point scale. 
I'm going to leave it 0.5 for now, but if you want to make the dot bigger, you can put a higher value. So let's try to play the animation again. It is a lot better now. And the reason why I add the math node to make the dot bigger is because I want to take whatever value from the value node here and add 0.5, then only send this value to the point scale to make the dot bigger. And then next, I want to add some rock to float around the hexagon. So to do it, first we need to create a rock. Press Shift A and add a cube. And then maybe we can turn on the wireframe so we are easy to see what we are doing. Then go to modifier properties and add a subdivision surface. Change the level viewport and render to 3. And then add a displace modifier. Click new to add a new texture. Name it rock. Then press this button to jump to texture tab. Then change the texture type to distort noise. Change the amount to 1.4, the texture size to 2, and the contrast to 0.4. You can play around with this number, don't have to follow me. Then go back to modifier properties and add a decimate. Set this to planner, activate all boundaries, and increase the angle limit to 30. Then we can make the rock smaller by pressing S. In the displace modifier, Set the coordinate to global. Then we can press Shift D and start duplicating the rock. And then select all the rock and press M to add it into a collection. Name it rock. And press OK. Then we can hide it for now. And then in the 3D viewport, press Shift A and add a circle. Increase the vertices to 32. And then press tab to go into edit mode, press E and S to extrude it, then press tab again to exit the edit mode, and maybe we can scale it slightly bigger. Then press N to toggle the properties panel, and change the rotation of X and Y axis to 20 degree. Then go to modifier properties, and add a displace modifier, then add a new texture, name it rock animation. Then press this button to jump to texture tab. Change the tab to cloud. And then I want to add a plan axis to control the display texture. Name it control rock animation. Select the ring, go back to modifier properties, change the coordinate to object. In the object column, select control rock animation. Then grab the control and move it higher. Go to the transform properties in the rotation Z, tap hashtag frame, divide 400. Then select the ring, go to geometry node, press new, press shift A and add a point instance. Click collection, untick the whole collection and select rock. And then currently the rock size is too big and I want to randomize it and make it smaller. So add an attribute randomize. In the attribute column, tap scale, change the max value to 0.10 maybe. And now I want to make the ring rotate, so in order to do it, press shift A and add a transform node. And then in the rotation G, tap hashtag frame, divide 100. You can divide whatever number you want, it depends on how slow you want the animation to be. You can experiment with it. Okay, and now we have finished the animation for the audio visualizer. So now select everything under the default collection here. Then press M to add into a new collection. Then name it audio visualizer. Then press OK. And we can hide the entire audio visualizer for now. And we can close the geometry node editor as well. Okay, now we can start to make the canyon. Okay, so to make the canyon, first press Shift A and add a plane. Press G and hold control and snap the plane to Y axis. Then press numpad 1 to see the front view. Then press tab to go into edit mode. Press alternate G to switch to x-ray mode. Select the vertices here and start to press E to extrude it. We need to extrude it and make an S shape. It don't have to be very precise. And then now we need to make all the polygon faces to become the same size. So to do this, hold alternate and left click one of the vertices at the right side. Right click, go to loop tools and select space. By the way, if your loop tools didn't show here, please go to edit, preference, add on, 
and search for loop tools then activate it then only it will appear here then we need to do the same step for the vertices at the left side hold alternate and click the vertices right click and select space then press alternate G to off the x-ray mode then press tab again to exit the edit mode then next we need to mirror it but before this we need to move the origin point to the center so go to object and set the origin to 3d cursor then now we can start to mirror it go to modifier properties and add a mirror then add array then now we actually need to clone it to the positive y axis so change the factor y to 1 and change the factor x to 0 then change the count to maybe 60 and remember to click merge then add a subdivision surface set the level viewport to 4 and render to 4 as well but this is up to you you can put lower as well if your computer is not fast enough and then next i want to apply a displacement map to the bottom parts of the canyon and i want the other parts of the canyon to remain normal for now so to do this we need to use a red paint to mask it so go to the vertex group and press the plus button to add a new group then rename it bottom vertex group you can put whatever name you like just make sure you remember what it is then go back to modifier properties and add a vertex width edit then rename it to vertex bottom then in the vertex group column select bottom vertex group tick the group add then go to fall off then click the double hex arrow to invert fall off and then press ctrl tab to go to width pin so for people who don't know anything about web paint, let me explain a little bit about it. So web paint is when you assign a particular value to a vertices. Vertices with higher weight have a red value and the vertices with lower weight have a blue value. For like example, when we finish the red paint later, when we assign a displacement map onto it, the displaced map will only appear on the red value area and it will slightly fade out from the yellow value to the green value and then everything that fall onto the blue value will be disappear so now let's start to paint it but instead of painting it manually using a brush i'm going to use a gradient texture to paint it so let's undo it then press ctrl tab and go to object mode go to influence and create a new mask texture rename it bottom vertex paint and then press this button to jump to texture tab change the texture tab to blend then in the 3d viewport press shift a and add an empty cube we are going to use this empty cube to control our gradient. Let's name the cube Control Weight Paint Bottom. Select our canyon, go back to modifier properties, then change the texture coordinate to object. And then in the object column, select the control weight paint bottom. And then let's go to weight paint mode to check our weight paint. And now you can see the red paint has been applied on all the vertices. And as we mentioned just now, the vertices with higher weight is the red value and our displacement map will only appear at the red color area so that means now we need to rotate the gradient texture 90 degree so that the red color will be fall at the bottom because we only want our texture to apply at the bottom at the floor here so to do it press ctrl tab and go back to object mode select the cube and press r then press y and tap 90 to rotate the gradient 90 degree on y axis then go back to the red paint again and check it Okay, so as we can see, the red color is not appear yet. Let's go back to the object mode again. Then we try to move the cube higher. Let's check it again. Okay, now the red color is on the floor and we can start to add displacement map onto it already. Go back to object mode. Go to modifier properties. Then add a displace modifier. Rename it Displace Bottom in the Vertex Group. Select Bottom Vertex Group. Then add a new texture. Then name it Displacement Map Bottom. Then click this button to go to Texture tab. Change the texture tab to Distort Noise. And currently the noise is too small. So let's change the size to 2. And the amount to 2 as well. Then change the contrast to 0.4 maybe. Okay, you can play around with this value to get the result you want. So you can experiment with it. Okay, now we have done the floor. And next, we want to do the same things for the middle part of the canyon. So go to the vertex group. 
Press the plus button to add another vertex group for the middle parts. Then rename it middle vertex group. Then go back to modifier properties again. Then duplicate the vertex bottom. Then rename it vertex middle. And then expand it and change the vertex group to middle vertex group. Then in the mask texture here, click the two button to make a single user copy. Then rename it middle vertex pin. Then select the empty cube here and then press Shift D and G to duplicate it. Then rename it Control Web Pane Middle. And then select the canyon again. Go back to Modifier Properties in the Influence section. Change the object to Control Web Pane Middle. This one. Then go to Web Pane Mode and check it. And now we want to move the red color value up until the center here. And at the same time, we want the bottom parts here to be blue. That means we don't want to have anything scattered at the bottom and the top. We only want to apply our displacement map in the middle. So to do it, click this button to jump to texture tab. Activate the color ramp, expand it. Then click the black color here and change the alpha to 1. Then click the plus button to add more color. Change this color to black color. Change this color to white. This color to white as well. And now we get it. We only want to apply our displacement map on the red color. Then now we can start to add displacement texture onto it. Go back to object mode. Go to modifier properties tab. Then duplicate the displace bottom. Rename it displace middle. Then expand it, change the vertex group to middle vertex group. Now we can see the result, but we are going to change the texture. So in the texture column here, press 2 to make a single user copy. Then rename it displace map middle. Then click this button to jump to texture tab. Then change the noise basis to Voronoi F1. You can experiment with other texture as well, but now I'm going to use this. And then change the distortion to cell noise. And then we can try to grab this empty cube and scale it taller so it will cover more area. And then now I want to add a plane axis to control the size of the displaced texture in the middle. Rename the plane axis to displaced texture for middle. Then select the canyon, go to modifier properties, change the coordinate to object. Then in the object column, select displace texture for middle. This one. And then now we can start to use the plane axis here to adjust the texture size we want. Let's change the plane axis to 1.2 for x axis, 2.6 for y axis, and 4.8 for z axis. You don't have to follow me, you can experiment with other numbers as well. And then select the canyon again, go to the modifier properties and go to the displace texture again. Then try to change the amount to 1, the size to 1.45. And next, I want to make the canyon to become curved. So to do it, press numpad 7 to see the top view. And then press shift A and add a bezier curve. Press tab to go into edit mode, then right click and change the spine type to poly. And then press R and then press G and tap 90. To rotate the spine 90 degree and now we can select these vertices and start to extrude it. Okay and then press A to select all vertices, right click and set the spine tab to bezier, then right click again and set the handle tab to automatic, then press tab again to exit the edit mode, then select the canyon, go to modifier properties tab, then add a curve modifier. Then in the curve object column, select the bezier curve we created just now and then change the deform axis to Y. And now our canyon is rotated to the wrong direction. So to turn it back, select the bezier curve, press tab to go into edit mode, press A to select all vertices, then change the mean tilt to 90 degree. Then press tab again to exit the edit mode. Then right click the canyon and change it to shade smooth. And now we can start to add the camera. Change the rotation to 90, 0, 0, and then move it higher. Then press numpad 0 to switch to camera view. Then go to the camera properties tab and change the focal length to 35mm. 
so that we have a wide angle view and then I think maybe we can make the texture in the middle parts of the canyon to be deeper a little bit so select the canyon, go to modifier properties, go to the displace middle and change the shank to 2 you can make it higher if you want but I'm going to use 2 for now okay next we need to add the water into the scene and since the water is not our main object to focus on so I'm not going to make any simulation for it I'm going to use a material to fake it so press shift A and add a plane, press S to scale it bigger press numpad 0 to switch back to camera view we can adjust the water level lower then next we can start to put our audio visualizer into the scene so activate the audio visualizer right click the collection and select object press numpad 7 to see the top view then press G to move the audio visualizer to somewhere near the corner then press R and press G and tap 90 to rotate 90 degree then press numpad 0 to switch to camera view and then press shift tilt to move our camera and then press G and G to move the audio visualizer higher I think we can scale it slightly bigger as well okay next we can start to add our material and lighting so first we can off our wireframe we don't have to use it anymore then press render preview go to render properties and activate the screen space ray tracing change the viewport sampling to 64 and untick the half rest trace then select the hexagon go to material properties tab add a new material and change the surface to emission shader then change the shank to 10 and then copy the material select the sphere go to rock activate it and select the sphere we created for the audio visualizer just now so click new to add a new material then paste the material and then now i want to add a point light in the center of the hexagon select the hexagon press shift s and move cursor to selected press shift a and add a point light change the power to 400 then make the radius bigger then now select the water add a new material then change the surface to glossy and change the roughness to zero and now the reflection of the water is really ugly so to fix this issue we need to add a reflection plane this one press G and G to move it down and press S to make it bigger to cover the entire water actually no need to cover all the water just need to cover the area that can seen by camera press 0 to go back to camera view go to the object properties tab and increase the distance then press G and G to move it higher ok and then select the water split the screen go to the shader editor press shift A and add a bump connect it to normal then press shift A again and add a noise texture then connect the color to height then select the noise texture and press ctrl T in case after you press ctrl T and nothing happen please go to preference add on and search for node wrangler then activate it drag the UV to connect to the vector then in the mapping node change the tab to texture then now we can start to animate the water drag the time indicator back to 1 hover the location Y and press I to add a keyframe then drag the time indicator to the last frame then put minus 0.3 for the Y axis then press I again to add the keyframe then in the graph editor press A to select all right click and change the interpolation mode to linear then try to press spacebar to play the animation <laughs> So everything looks fine and now I want the water to have more ripple so in order to do it we can change the noise texture scale to a bigger value and the detail to 4 then decrease the strength to 0.3 and the distance to 2 then we can make the color a little bit darker go to the verb properties and change the color to black and then I think we can make the camera focal length even smaller I need a wider angle view so let's select the camera go back to camera properties tab and change the focal length to 25mm 
and then I want to give the canyon a darker color so select the canyon go to material properties tab press new and change the base color to a bluish gray color and then next I think we can add more details onto the hexagon so if it looks more interesting so select the hexagon and press numpad slash to focus the object then press tab to go into edit mode and maybe we can make the hexagon slightly thicker so how alternate and click one of the vertices point press s to scale it smaller then now we can start to design the hexagon we can add more details onto it you can make whatever design you like don't have to follow me Then after finish the design, press tab to exit the edit mode and press numpad slash to unfocus the object. Then select the audio visualizer, right click and select object. Then I think we can scale it bigger. Press S, scale it slightly bigger. Then select the rock ring and maybe we can make it smaller. And I think currently the rock is too round. It doesn't look like a rock at the moment. In the outliner, simply select one of the rock. Under the rock collection, simply select one of the rock. Then go to texture tab properties. Change the texture size to 0.57 maybe. And change the amount to 2.2. You can experiment with other value as well to get a different shape of rock. And then now we have a nicer rock. Then next, we almost come to the last step. We want to add the fog and then we want to add an area light to lighten it from above. So press numpad 7 to see the top view. Let's change the viewport shading to solid. And then press shift A and add a cube. Make it bigger until it covers the entire corner. Maybe switch the viewport shader to wireframe so it's easy to see. And then we want to add a volume material onto it. So go to shader editor. Press new to add new material. Delete the principal node. And then press Shift A, go to shader and add a principal volume. Connect the volume to volume. And then press numpad 0 to switch back to camera view. Then change the viewport shading back to render preview. Maybe we can turn down the density a little bit. Let's try 0 0.06. Then I want to change the color to a bluish color. And then I want to add an area light above it. Move it higher until it's out of the camera. Go to the light properties tab. Change the size to 5.5 maybe. And change the power to 50. Then change the color to a bluish color as well. And then we done it. So if you like my video, please subscribe and see you next week. Bye.